welcome to another episode of our TNCBA Tips, Tricks, and How-Tos. Again, these videos are meant to help out our club members and any other anglers that are watching this, hopefully give you some insight into some things that will help you improve on the water. And today, Kelsey, we're going to talk about things you need to fish a tournament. Now, I'm talking about this from a a very basics one-on-one -on -one level. Yeah. People that maybe have never fished a tournament before, you're thinking about getting out there and fishing some events. So what we're gonna talk about just real briefly are the things that you need to have in the boat, things you can do maybe prior to an event to help you get comfortable. Because I know that it can be overwhelming, especially if you try to fish an open event. Like, yeah. let's say it's a, a charity event or a fundraiser, one of those opens, and there might be 60, 70, or even more boats than that, it can get very overwhelming to try to get comfortable with that. And there's really no way to put yourself in those circumstances beforehand. Plus, do I have what I need? Okay. So again, we love to have new anglers come to the club, fish with us. We feel like we're a really, really great way to get into the tournament scene and get used to tournament fishing. So guys, the first thing that I would really say to you is getting uh, with within the boat, go through the rules and know what that tournament allows, what it requires. Do you need to have you need to have your boat insurance? You need to make sure that you understand the rules of the event. Take care of all of that stuff pre-tournament, okay? Well beforehand. Make sure you know what parts of the lake are off limits yes. or if there's an off limits to practice. Make sure that your boat's in proper order as far as, yes. like, make sure your kill switch works. And everything yes. like that. That's a, that's a new law. Yes. You have to be attached to a kill switch when your boat is in operation. Make sure time. that your live wells work, the yes. aerators and research pumps work. So going through your boat and making sure that all of those things are in working order, all the proper paperwork's taken care of, that you have your fishing license. Um, but getting into the boat, the things that you need, okay? Of course, tackle. Now, how many rods and reels you need? It's up to you, okay? You can go fish a tournament with one set, rod and reel. But make sure your tackle's ready to go. Things that you need in there, life jackets, throw cushions. You need to make sure that you have a, a net. Now, most of our events, we're not Bassmaster Elite Series yeah. and stuff. We're not worried about um, fishing or landing those fish without a net. But make sure you have a net. As some of our guys have figured out, make sure your net doesn't have a hole in it. <laughs> that seems to help <laughs> exactly. with that a little bit. Uh, other things you might need, um, make sure you have a good rope in your boat just in case you do have mechanical issues. Yes. You have a tow rope, um, either flare gun, whistle, whistle, or an air horn, something yes. like that. If they're, if you if you are in distress, you have yep. some way of communication. If Make sure your phone's charged. I yep. mean, those are definitely things just in case there are problems that do come about. And getting into some more of the, the other things to have as far as relation to a live well, guys, with those, those fish... Taking care of them is important. You're bringing those fish to the, the scales to have some weight to do well in the term, but also we want to let those fish go and be able to enjoy those fish for many years to come. Rejuvenate or um, the uh, G-juice, G some G sort of live yes. well treatment to help keep those fish healthy, keep the slime on them. Um, also, the other thing to think about, um, fin clips. Fin clips are great, especially this winter time. Fish are deeper holding. So a lot of times when you catch them from deeper, that swim bladder will expand. They have trouble staying upright. They'll get on their sides. Those fin clips go right there on the two two fins, and they'll hold them upright so that they can breathe until they settle out. Uh, you can have a fizzing needle. I am fizzing is is a uh, an art. It's a technique. Some people are really good at it. Some people are horrible at it. I, in my opinion, have m had much better success with just the fin clips. And yes. you're not puncturing any part of that fish yeah, you, in that you case. You run a risk of doing harm to the fish. Yes, if you don't know how to do it. Right. So having those those fin clips is big. Have you some coal tags? And again, non-penetrating. The the cow coastals make some great coal tags um, that are non-penetrating. So have you some coal tags for your fish? Not for the simple fact of culling fish per se. I love the fact of being able to get the fish out yeah, of the line. Yeah, it well. makes it that much easier at weigh in, keeping things a little more. Uh, up to speed, keeping yep. it fast pace. And it doesn't, I don't feel like it stresses happen. the fish out as much if yeah. you're not sitting there trying to grab at them and they're thrashing throughout the thing. Pull them out of there with those cold tags really quick, put them in the bag, helps you out there. So some cold tags. Have a working scale in the boat, okay? You may catch your PB that day. You want to know what it weighs. The other thing is it helps you also with culling those fish. There are several good ones out there. We uh, fish with the Connect Scale 3, 
that also allows you to kind of keep track of it on your phone so that you have it there for future reference and stuff. I know Rapala makes a good one that yes, a lot of people do. like that keeps track of your all your catches and helps you cull. But even with those those scales, I would still strongly suggest a cull beam. Yes. And I like a cull beam for the simple instance of you weigh them on that scale, you put them in the live well, they might be within a tenth of a pound or a very close weight. You can throw them onto that cull beam and by doing so, then you know. You can see for sure which one weighs more and which one you need to cull. Another important thing is a golden rule. Yes. You need to be you yes. need to be up to, to date with what lake you're on, their their, size, cold, limits. their size limits and all that. And you need a good golden rule or good measure to make sure that you are get, getting the fish that are the right size and making right. sure you're not bringing in small fish. Because oftentimes these rulers will have little little different nuances Variations, to yes. them. And you can, they can be off by a little bit. So a golden rule you need to have in the boat. Um, scissors and pliers. Scissors and pliers are key. Braided line scissors especially. Pliers to get that a hook out of a fish's mouth if it's deep. And then I guess I would say also a really good pair of split rings yes. as well. Sp split yes. ring pliers um, go a long way. And guys, going from the tackle and the, the things you need, like I said, those are, those are the basic things. And, and we may be leaving something off. You maybe drop something in the comments here to add to this that, that are some basics that you need to go tournament fishing. Electronics, those types of things, guys, you can go out there and fish with the most basic, basic of electronics and just go fishing and have a great time. You don't need those things. We're talking to you about some of the basics that are going to make your tournament, tournament experience a lot better. The next one is getting comfortable around crowds, I think. And yes. this is more so not about fishing around people, okay, because you can learn to do that. I'm talking about being at the boat ramp with a large number of people and trying to get your stuff mm -hmm. backed in, dealing with boat traffic as far as a lot of these tournaments will have check-ins or they'll do live well checks and stuff. So my strong suggestion to you is take you a day. Go work on just backing your boat into different areas in the parking lot or backing down the ramp, okay? Because you need to get comfortable and confident with that in order to relieve that stress. Because I know that's one thing that keeps a lot of people from tournament fishing is just mm -hmm. the simple stress of what all is going on. There's a lot of boats around. There's a lot of traffic. And people get into a hurry and get stressed out. Yeah. Calm, keep it calm, yeah. right? The, the, the more confidence you have in it, the less possibility of having an I mean, any kind of accident or something right. like that. So being confident in what you're doing. And we've all um, seen it at like yes. BFLs and stuff. People that get in a hurry or get they, in a rush, they yeah. hit another truck or they hit another boat. So yeah, just, things happen when you're rushed. So, I mean, yeah. try to try to get, get into early. a mindset. Get there early. Yeah, that's yeah. another one. Um, just uh, try to, like I said, get into a mindset. Um, gain your confidence. Do those things. Try to go out and practice and do different things. Get comfortable with your boat, your trailer, all that, and trying to make sure that you are ready for something like that. So then other than backing the trailer in and putting the, wa the boat in the water, the other thing is to get comfortable maneuvering your boat on the water. Um, and this might sound completely ridiculous to you all, okay? But one thing I would suggest, practice pulling into a dock, backing out of a dock, being able to turn your boat very quickly by being in reverse and then spinning it and throwing it in a neutral to turn around in a, in a small area. Um, live oil checks, you're normally idling by a boat or by a uh, stationary object. Mm -hmm. One of the best things I can think of for you to do to get practice in controlling your boat and idling past something is find these buoys, these no wake buoys on these lakes, okay? And as you're idling out, you know, idle right by that. Work on controlling your boat and getting comfortable with those things. That way you're not stressed out and it relieves that stress on tournament day. Now we're not talking here, we'll get into some of the planning and breaking down lakes and, and doing all your, your practice and stuff. We'll get into that later. But again, this, this video here is mainly getting you ready. What are the basics that you need to go out and fish a tournament. And like I said, the biggest thing is to stay calm when you're showing up to these events. There might be a lot of boats that are there. Stay calm, have already practiced these things and gotten comfortable with your boat control yes. and stuff. Um, show up early so that you can have a little extra time, don't get in a rush. And then when it comes to the stuff that you're gonna have in your boat, like we said, make sure everything's in working order on the boat, those yes. basics. And one thing, to specifically make sure it works is your bow and stern light. Make sure yes. those things work because yep. those are important things that you'll need in these in tournaments. So, I mean, because yep. you're normally taking off, either it's foggy or it's low light conditions, you want to be able to be seen. So make sure your yep. bow and stern light work, red, green, yep. and white. And make sure, like I said, your flotations, your life jackets, your throw cushions. 
Make sure you have a fire extinguisher in the boat. Those things that are that are in those um, Coast Guard suggestions and rules and regulations, and also with TWRA, you want to make sure that you're meeting all those regulations that you have need to there. Make sure you know the rules of the event, what off limits there are, what you're allowed to fish with. Some events don't allow Alabama rigs, and then like we said, making sure that you have some of these other uh, utensils, tools, the pliers, the scissors. Um, having the, the fin clips, the cull tags, having a net that, that's in solid working order. Like Kelsey talked about some of the safety equipment, having a good tow rope, having yourself an air horn or something to get some way to get the attention of other people. But those things, I know it sounds like a lot, but if you go through your checklist and stuff and you'll kind of think your way through it, get these items to have, make sure they're all ready to go. That's going to help you relieve any stress, and it's going to help you have a good time out there on the water. And, guys, it's a great way to feed that competitive side of us, to, to get out there and have a great time and compete. Yeah, you may not win, but that's okay. Just the fact of, like, when you set the hook on that fish and you know that it's going to make a difference at the scales, oh, yeah. oh, my goodness, it gets your blood pumping. So, guys, I hope that this video helps you out. I hope that you take the time to get prepared and make sure that you're ready to go for tournaments and try them out if you've never fished in a tournament. You'll love it and go through these tips and these tricks and it'll help you out, guys. We'll see y'all later.